It is October 31st, Sunday, 2021, for the, the, the spooky episode of Join the Journey podcast. I feel like anytime you have to say that we have to do it like the elongated 1950s ghost way. The spooky episode. Uh, uh, I, this is the most adult Halloween I will ever have in my entire life. Like now that I'm, I'm getting settled in, the past week has been hell, which I'll get into. But like, I I haven't even I haven't attempted to find a costume. Uh, I mean, Hannah bought a pumpkin. That's it's, it's not even as a gourd. That's how you know you're an adult when for Halloween you don't get a, a pumpkin, you get a gourd. This thing is gray and lopsided and and half dead. And and honestly, that if anything, that is more the spirit of Halloween, in my opinion. Um, th- this past week has been absolutely terrible. This has probably been the worst week, <laughs> the worst week of Chicago I've experienced in my life. And it's not because of Chicago. It's not because of comedy. And I wouldn't, you, dare I say, dare I say, it's not even because of me. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. I know. No, Sean, it's not your fault. There's a referent. Reference to uh, Goodwill Hunting. I didn't want to do the whole scene because it would have gotten weird. Um, my phone, the screen on my phone broke. It's so like the, the phone itself was still on. Like you could feel it vibrate when you touch the right buttons. But um, the screen itself <laughs> just wouldn't turn on. And I, it, fuck, man. I spent this whole week trying to get to work without the phone getting trying to get in contact people without my phone you can't you, everything you, I, everything everything is on the phone and not in like obviously we all we're all aware we all know that we need our phones for shit but it is a whole other experience like when you get home at night in the dark and it's you can't find the 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 uh, the light switch, and you're like, oh, I'll just let me just turn on my my flashlight. No, people used to have to buy separate flashlights and keep it on a little keychain if they wanted to just have a flashlight. Do you know how insane that is? Those cavemen might as well be getting just two rub two sticks together, get some flint in your apartment. And just kind of hide at different places and grab the flint, rub it together, make a fire real quick, and then find the light switch. Because that's what it felt like. It was fucking terrible. So I have a new phone now. I have a new phone. I, f- I figured it out. It was, god damn. <sighs> it's the anxiety of it. Like, I, 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 fuck. Like, I've never felt so just disconnected. Like if, I, if my phone fucked up in Riverside, like I know people and I'm getting to know people out here, but it is, it's just a different feeling. And, and the GPS shit is not a joke, man. Like I, I can navigate through the city now a lot better. Um, like if, if you, if you tell me where, uh, Western street, like Western street, if I'm on Western street, if I know, okay, I gotta go North or South and I'll know how to get home. Same with Damon, or, uh, Archer, Archer Street, I think. Fucking Milwaukee is a weird one. But, but like if you give me a certain street, I'll, I'll know essentially where to go if I need to get home. But that doesn't mean that's the most efficient way to get home. Like I had to go up to the school uh, more way north, past Wrigley Field North. And... I, 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 was, I had to take the, if I had my GPS, I would have taken the um, freeway thing that takes you on the coast of Lake Michigan. I didn't have, like, the, also the freeways here are nutty. They're like little twisted up Twizzlers. There's just no rhyme or reason for how any freeway takes you to any given place. Or maybe I'm just not used to it yet. I don't know. But I couldn't take the freeway. I had to just take the regular streets and it, it took me forever to get to work. It took me th- like three hours to get back from work. And then I went to this fucking scam phone store where I go in there and I'm like, hey, my phone's not working. So I go in, my phone's not working. And then all of a sudden, the screen started working like a little bit. 
And I go in there and I talk to the guys. They're like, all right, well, yeah, we'll hold on to it. Just come back in like a couple hours. I come back. The phone's still working. And they're like, we fixed your charger, the regular charger, um, the one that plugs in. I've been using that wireless uh, fucking plate charger when you, you, you sit on the plate and then it, it overheats your phone while it charges. That's what I've been using, the hot plate charger. Uh, but they fixed that. And then later that night, the phone just stops working again. And I go over there. I go back to the phone store. I'm like, hey, it just stopped working again. And I give it to him for uh, another few hours. And I go back and I'm like, hey, checking in on my phone. And they're like, yeah, we're, st- we're, still, we're still working on it. You got to come back tomorrow. So I go to work. I try to figure out where work is with no GPS. Goddamn Google Maps and writing it on note papers and sticky notes. Like we're in the goddamn 90s isn't even. Early 2000s would have been it. How did people find shit in the 90s? The 60s and 80s and 60s and 70s. You maps? You took out a big ass map to find shit? So I go, oh, fuck. So I go back and I go back and I'm like, hey, man, I'm, just, I'm getting a new phone. I'm just going to get a new phone. Can I just have this old phone back and I'll fix it later? He's like, uh, it's, we, it's still taken apart. So you have to come back another day. So I had to come back another day. And I think what happened that first time was the phone just started working. And then they fixed the, the charging port and charged me for that shit. And we're like, yeah, I mean, you know, the phone's working, so you know, he basically got what he wanted. Fucking assholes. God damn it. Ah, but today's a new day, day of the dead, and uh, I'm looking at all of this shit. Like, this, this week has been fucking hell for me. And I'm looking at it as a sign from the universe that I need to switch up some shit, so I'm doing that. I keep saying it. I keep saying it every week. Yeah, man. Do meditation. Do my exercise. Do uh, I don't say eat healthier. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Meditation. Exercise. All that. Keep me accountable, audience. Whoever the fuck you, who, 14, 15 people that seem to watch this. Email, fucking comment. Johnny Gold does it. He always seems snarky and negative about it. <laughs> but. I don't know. I can't read the tone. Hey, Johnny, if you're listening. Um, but I'm, it's good. I'm, I have my new phone. Today's a new day. I exercised, drink orange juice and kombucha, hash browns. We'll move forward. I have some new stand-up goals with this whole uh, fundraiser thing. I looked through my material again, and I was like, you know what? Actually, I can, I can make this work in a not completely offensive way, ridiculous way. Um. But I have a new goal that I'm working on, which is even if I'm in front of an audience that I uh, uh, triggers me, an audience that I, I'm not a fan of, I can just tell, like, we're not going to be buddies. I don't want to chit-chat with anybody at the bar. I don't want to talk about, you know, our soldiers or whatever the fuck they want to talk about. I, I'm, gonna, I'm working on just being funny regardless. Like I was listening to um, more podcasts. It was Bill Burr podcast where he was talking about just you know just be you, and just do you. Fuck everybody else. And it's like yeah, that, that's that's easier to say when you have money and you get, <laughs> and you're like really really good at this and people want to see you. As of right now, I need to learn how to not scorch the audience when I just don't like them, like as people. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. And I, I did it. I did it on, what day was that? Tuesday, because I got on the Laugh Factory again, which was when my phone was working. And that, that, that was some good luck, admittedly. Um, but I went into, the, went into a bar where, you know, big old American flag, Irish shit everywhere. And uh, just a, a sad, lonely, angry white dude vibe, which is a really dangerous place to be in. You know, that can go, that can go left pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, I purposefully um, did not do material that would have obviously made them super uncomfortable. Um, and it's, you know, man, I'm not selling out, man. All right. I'm not a fucking sellout, bro. 
Okay, man, the corporations aren't going to take me. You're not going to pay me in Bitcoin, brother. You're going to pay me in good old-fashioned quarters so I could do my laundry. <laughs> I... This is an exercise for me. Like my, my still, my intention and my goals are still to be me and do me. And it is very fun to upset those types of people. But right now it it is a skill I need to learn, you know, getting booked for, for something like, for something like this. I'm sure I'll learn from it once I do it. But as of right now, it's like, okay, this is my job. I gotta, I have to know when I need control. I need to have more self-control. I need to be able to balance my emotions when I'm on stage. Because I think it'll even, it'll just make me a better performer and a better comedian. And being able to turn up the likability and then turn it back down at my leisure. Leisure? Leisure. Leisure. Being able to do that, I think, is going to be an important skill. And um, that's, that's, that's what I'm working on. Um, and I have, I finally have the new equipment. I have a new microphone. I have another pop screen and I don't have another, uh, mic stand because I thought I could just connect the pop screen to the mic itself. And as I was finagling it, I realized that would not be the case. So I actually do have to get another mic stand, which is annoying, but I'll survive. Um, so I got this and I have, uh, I have a podcast. I have a guest scheduled for next Sunday. So there should be uh, a new voice that you'll get to hear. Um, spoilers is not Pat. I texted Pat and it might be a bit before I can, I can schedule things with Pat, <laughs> but I do, I do have a guy, there's a guy I've been, um, talking to. It sounds like I just told you about my Tinder dates. Yeah, there's this guy I've been talking to. He's real cute. Got fluffy hair. He loves baseball. Does he have fluffy hair? Is his hair fluffy? I don't know. But he's a guy I met. I met early on, and um, I'm actually looking forward to talking to him and like getting to know him more. When when we first met uh, was when I was smoking. I don't think I've talked about this. I haven't been. I don't. Well, I haven't been smoking. Out here, they don't have. Uh, well, they have weed. They have like regular weed and shit. But it's 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 expensive and it's inconvenient to get. Like it's crazy expensive. And so their substitute, uh, their diet weed, if you will, is Delta 8, which uh, I don't know, does something. When when you go into the smoke shops, the dudes are like, yeah, take out the chemical that gives you paranoia. That's what they, that's what they say behind the counter. Yeah, you know, it, it gets rid of part of what makes weed weed. And I've been smoking that for a while. And um, it just has this chemical feeling about it. It feels like there's like traces of bleach in it. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Um, And I, so I haven't been smoking. And God damn it, is my sleep way better. I get to REM sleep and I have dreams. I dream about things. I met Will Smith in a dream recently. No bullshit. He was very, very buff and his hands were enormous. They were like, they're like baseball gloves. But he's not buff right now. I don't know. He's doing a whole book about that. Anyway. Any who's it's. Um, yeah, I... Uh, fuck that? <laughs> Shit. Oh, Delta, Delta yeah, weed. So I haven't been smoking and uh, I haven't been... I, I had a crazy, crazy hangover. One for, I haven't had in a long time. So I haven't really been drinking either. So I've just been existing, and that's probably very healthy. But when I met this dude, I, I was I was still smoking, and my memory shit, as people know. Um, so it'll be good to, to like talk to him, and for a long, oh, like a long period of time. And I like the podcast, be, like podcast format of getting to know people, because it's just a really good excuse to talk to people. Like I have no excuse to t- speaking of the phone shit. You, when you have your phone, there. even if you're at a bar, a good old-fashioned sports bar, you have your phone. There's no excuse. There's no reason I got to talk to the guy next to me eating peanuts with the shakes because he's, he's an alcoholic. I don't need to talk to Bert. 
maybe in the nineties, I would have needed to talk to Bert or Bert, Bert probably wouldn't have wanted to sit next to me and talk to me at all. But besides the point, it'll be good to talk to him, get to know him better. Um, for you guys to get to know him, whoever you guys are, please comment, <laughs> comment, share, like, en- engage with me so that I know something is happening. Cause I really have no idea what's happening. Um, and then I met this other guy I want to do a podcast. I'm just telling you all the people I want to do a podcast with and not doing it yet, yet. Here's the thing I've learned about myself. I want to do a thing. And so I immediately go do the thing, which is a really, uh, admirable trait sometimes. Like sometimes that's a really good thing to be like as a comic getting on stage, working on new material. I want to do a thing. So I'm going to go do that thing right now. Really good trait to have as a comedian, but just a regular human being who needs to schedule things and organize things and has to plan ahead to some degree and live in the moment at the same time. And, you know, learn from the past, but not dwell in the past, all that stuff. That is, it is not good to have that instinct. Because I've had to force myself to not contact all of these comics that I've been talking about. And I have others in my head movies. There's so many, I have a, like a list of comics in my head where I want to contact all of them at one time. And be like, hey, do you want to do my podcast? And then probably they'll be like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. A good, of, a good deal of them will. But then I'll overextend myself, I'll overbook myself, and then it'll all fall to shit. So right now, this is my baby step of dealing with that. I'm just going to talk about some of the people that I want to do a podcast with. I want to interview and get to know. But I'm not going to um, contact them uh, until it is until I'm ready. Until I, you know, I need to get one down. I haven't even gotten the first one down. And I'm already like, oh, I could contact this guy. Uh, this girl seems cool. Uh, I've seen this guy be funny before. Like, I want to just hit up everybody. I don't know. Does anybody have... Anybody else have that issue? Does anybody else's brain just shoot out like a Spider-Man web and connect to every little thing that they think about and try to do all of this shit at once? I sound manic, but I'm not. Well, maybe. No, no, I'm not. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, but I met this other guy. Uh, I met him at, pff, it's been like a, I think it's like been like a month. Uh, this dude, Aaron Klein. Uh, we, we, we connected on being fellow AA runs and having our, our past few years ruined because of that goddamn key and peel sketch. And I keep, he, you know, there's so many open mics, um, in the city and there's so many people who I, I saw for a while in the beginning. And then I just kind of haven't seen them for a while. Um, but this guy just keeps popping up at the same mics. <laughs> and so I keep seeing him. And, and he's always like cool and he's always funny. So I'm like, yeah, I want to get to know this guy more. Um, um, I, I saw him at Lincoln Lodge last night, went to Lincoln Lodge, Chicago fight, shout out to Chicago fight club. Thank you for having an open mic on a Saturday night. Uh, when, when the, uh, the open mic well is very, very dry. Thank you. It's appreciated. I saw him at the uh, Chicago Fight Club and I don't know, there's like a, uh, a chillness about this dude that, that I appreciate. Like just easy, just very easy. You ever met somebody that's like not exhausting to talk to? So that's a really long pause. I'm trying to suss out what I'm saying here like somebody who okay okay you ever uh <laughs> you ever been to like a house party or a bar or whatever and that get Bert sitting sits next to you and Bert is lonely and just needs to talk he's not talking to you that's what it is that's what it is fucking Bert is not talking to you or with you. He is talking at you. Or that person where they're just they're 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 throwing verbal baseballs at your head and and all you're you're dodging them. You're not even catching them anymore. You're just like, "Yep. Mhm. Oh, cool." Like you just generic 
responses and that person's not picking up on the fact that you don't want to interact with them and you're doing the body language shift, your feet are shifting away and you're, you're slowly getting further away from them and, and their voice just turns up louder to compensate for the distance that you're trying to make. And if you're an asshole or if you just don't give a shit, then you just like, hey man, fuck off and you leave. But if you if you even try to be polite with this type of person, they'll they'll just sink their 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 claws in you, and they will not let you go, and they'll just talk at you till your fucking ears bleed. Aaron Klein's the opposite. Of that. <laughs> when I talk to this, it really does feel like he's there listening and shit. Um, I think one of the issues I have when it comes to conversation with people is is staying present and not going off in a fucking la la land. Because I, 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 in talking to the the Jordan, the guy I'm going to be um, podcasting with next week, talking to him, he can tell. He can. We talked about this. He can tell when I'm not present, when I'm not in the conversation anymore. And luckily, he's patient enough to to repeat himself. But most people, like it comes off as rude. You know, it comes off as like a dis, complete disinterest. And it's not that. It's just you know, head trauma and and regular trauma. Um, but no, talking with, with Aaron Klein, um, just a, a smooth, calm, um, connection when speaking to him. And that's the, you know, that's nice. It makes, it makes uh conversation easy. Yeah. Will this be the clip? Yeah, this might end up being the clip. And the last, the last little thing I wanted to talk about before getting the rest of my day done, is uh, Mikey McKernan. Okay, please look this guy up. Look him up. He, um, he's a comedian from California. He's a guy. I, friend, Mikey, if I make this clip, can I, can I, can I call you my friend, Mikey? Um, let, me find his, let me find his Instagram. There it is. It's uh, oh, it's just Mikey McCur. It's spelled uh, M I K E Y M C K E R N A N. Mikey McKernan. Okay, first off, this guy's fucking hilarious. He's a hilarious person, beyond likable. Beyond likable would just be lovable. You meet this guy and you just love this guy, and not in like a teddy bear way because he's like a his frame is like a very tall scarecrow. Like a scarecrow that hangs out at Grateful Dead concerts. That's his that's his body type. But you <laughs> he's just there's something about him where you talk to you just you just have a smile on your fucking face when you see this guy. Trust me. Look up Mikey McKernan. He um he just made a YouTube channel. He made it like a vlog YouTube channel. He's basically doing a much cooler, better, sleeker, funnier video version of what I'm doing. My shit is like uh, like an Anne Frank diary in, <laughs> goddamn, in an attic in the quiet, whispering into my little microphone journal thing. But his is, he's, it's, trust me, go check out Mikey McKernan's YouTube channel. I, I, I cannot suggest it enough because it is, I promise you, it's entertaining and it's interesting. And that guy is going to go places. There's just no way he can't. Because he lo- like, I love his love for comedy. And for stand up and for performance in this art form. Like, I think comics get weird about calling it an art form sometimes because it can come off pretentious. You're doing stand up, you're fucking around on stage or whatever, but it is an art form. And you can tell this very pure love for it. It's like a childlike innocence about him that I just really appreciate. Um, so go, please, please go check out uh, Mikey McKernan's YouTube. And. Shorter, shorter than usual, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, comment, like, share, follow, subscribe, all the other buzzwords. Uh, and there should be a guest next week, so till next week.